I've got all kinds of videos today, guys, that are all these squared, weird, formatted videos. And this is just one of the one of many. And this is Stardust VR, and this is available right now. And my volume is a little bit high. It's weird because my volume in my headphones is way lower than the volume on the actual show. And so I'll like barely hear this music. And then when I'm watching the YouTube video later, the volume is way the heck louder. And it can really be all off track here. But this is Stardust VR. Now, why am I bringing this up? I'm bringing this up because I happen to see that it is currently available on Steam. So let's go ahead and switch over real quick to a web browser with small video window. Here it is, Stardust VR. This is uh, being, pro it's being published by Frozen Dreams and the developer is Last in Oni. This came out on October 11th. So this just came out yesterday. I, I just kind of forgot about it, didn't bring it up. And it is $7.64. It's 15% off. Normal price on this is nine bucks. It's on a promotion until October 18th. There are no user reviews whatsoever. I probably should reach out to these guys, see if I can get a code, maybe screw around with this game for a couple of minutes. I don't know, it looks kind of colorful to me. Um, and it's relatively cheap, but it is releasing at a time when we've just got so much stuff. So it is kind of crazy. Crunchy says, this looks like portrait videos on smartphones that so many people record. Yeah, you don't know the half of it, Crunchy, because let me tell you, I've got a lot of little videos that I want to show today that all have, a lot of them happen to be in these portrait kind of mode. This is Blade and Sorcery, and this is only like 10 seconds. And it's not formatted right either. And it's, it's over before you know it. All it is is this guy pulls out a sword. He does some electrical capabilities on his right hand. And then he electrifies his sword. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. But this is Blade and Sorcery. I saw this on the Vive subreddit. Some people were talking about this. I'll make it full screen for just a sec here. But yeah, that's that's pretty much the extent of it right there. But this Blade and Sorcery game is getting a lot of hype. I don't know if anybody else has noticed like how much hype this game is getting. I'm pretty sure that this was the game. This Blade and Sorcery is the same game where there's like people getting chopped all over the place and it's really bloody. Yeah, let, let me go to my other video. Here is my other video on it. This is that one video. Do you guys remember where the guy takes like a battle axe or whatever and he and he puts it in between the thing and and it's like the physics and all of that and everybody was all excited about this so here's another video of it even though even though these arms look at the guy's arms the guy's arms are like going going really really crazy there it's like come on stabilize your arms a little bit oculus go gets replacement facial interface with vr cover yes they do have a cover and how much is it it's 29 bones with standard shipping at seven bucks or optional express shipping for 19 bucks so this is the vr facial interface for oculus go and here we are on vr covers on their actual website here you can pre-order estimated ship date October 31st, so coming in time for Halloween, hopefully, or at least it's gonna ship then, 29 bucks, and then I guess you gotta add shipping as well. So not exactly the cheapest thing in the world, but it could add considerable more comfort uh, to the Oculus Go, which is kinda cool. Those of you out there that actually have the original HTC Vive, have you guys ever tried taking off the 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 retail padding that comes on there and just sticking it up to your face and just seeing how much more you can get inside of there because i'm telling you guys when i had my vive i was in a completely different world than a lot of people i used an incredibly thin amount of foam i took off the retail thing and it was just hard plastic 
and I took just a tiny amount of foam. I mean, not even six millimeters. It was probably like three millimeters thickness, maybe not even that. And I put it on my HTC Vive and I was using this thing. It was unbelievably thin, but I got so much further up into the HTC Vive and I swear to you, I got like another 10 degrees of field of view. And I think people are crazy that aren't doing it. Now, technically it might not be super comfortable. So for example, like I had this thing on my HTC Vive for the longest time. And whenever one of my kids wanted to try a VR game and they would put it on, my son would be like, dad, I, this is too, this hurts. I, I need the other one. And so he wasn't able to deal with it, but man, I would get used to it so much more field of view. But with a lot of other VR headsets, it doesn't seem like you could really, really get in there too much. This is dead and buried on the Oculus Go. It's been available for a long time. This isn't anything new. It isn't anything special, but here we go again. Here is another square view um, uh, a, a narrow field of view here. And that's the way the Oculus Go, like if you want to stream your Oculus Go to your PC and capture game footage, this is the way the game footage is captured. Hopefully with the Oculus Quest, it's a little bit different. Hopefully we can get, um, hopefully we can get widescreen, you know, with Oculus Quest when we're trying to beam it to a PC or whatever. But this is the way they do with Oculus Go. And one of the things I wanted to mention is I played Dead and Buried for the very first time yesterday on the Oculus Go. I've had it for a while, like VR Roundtable, we got like a key for this like a long time ago. Back when the Oculus Go came out, we got a whole bunch of keys for all kinds of different Oculus Go games. And so we loaded all these games on. And I always looked at it in my library and I was like, Dead and Buried, yeah, I've played Dead and Buried a million times. This is the Go version. It's probably super watered down, super crappy. And I just was never into it. I was never excited about it. And I finally turned it on and finally gave it a try. And I was quite impressed with this. Like graphically, visually, it looks very cartoony and it looks really quite good. I was, I was, pleasantly surprised by this. Now, the only thing I did is I got into like a single player shoot, uh, shooter gallery, basically this, where you're going through waves of enemies and just shooting the zombies. And But the bottom line here is I was impressed. I was impressed with the visuals, very cartoony and stuff, but it didn't seem like this gigantic step down. And I've also heard a lot of people talking about how Dead and Buried on the Oculus Go is one of their favorite Oculus Go games, period. They put it up there with Drop Dead. And I've said a million times that Drop Dead on the Oculus Go is very impressive. And this was this one was impressive as well. Let's check this out for a second, because this is currently available. Okay, so that is called Lollipang VR. And let me turn this down, it's kind of loud. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because this is a game that came out yesterday. Lollipang VR, it came out yesterday. And I just wanted to kind of report on some of the games that have been coming out recently. And so if I go ahead and bounce over to my little web browser here, yeah, this is the Steam page, Lollipang. It is developed by WiseCat. And it did come out yesterday. There are no user reviews yet. The price is 20 bucks, but it is on a discount. You can pick it up for just under 15 bucks. This special promotion ends on October 18th. Have you guys heard of MUVR? This is actually kind of like legitimately cool how you can, you can literally pick up PlayStation 1 games put them into the PlayStation, you turn on the power button and, and the cords, like it actually has cords. This is like really kind of sweet. And this is in the news here. 
you can actually plug the cords into different spots. You plug the uh, you plug the cartridges in there. This is MUVR. It shows a little video thing. And I saw this, you know, putting the actual game disc in, turning your TV on, the blue screen with the little video. And you know, the one thing that VR can do really well is it can show old school TV monitors and make them look highly realistic. It really does look good. This is why be, look at the look at the sunlight coming in the window and going through the the blinds on the window and the shadows over there on the wall by that doom poster and the return of the jedi poster and all that see those shadows over there that is freaking impressive i like that i got to play this i got to screw around with this being a guy that was a retro gamer so this is megalith for playstation vr and we have some unfortunate news the unfortunate news is this game is not going to make 2018. This game has been delayed till 2019, but here's the good news, January 8th. So apparently this is coming out on January 8th for PlayStation VR, but not only that, starting on November 13th, there is going to be a free trial version on the PlayStation Store along with a discounted pre-order deal. So on November 13th, we're gonna get some kind of demo for Megalith on PSN, and then this is going to be available January 8th. Now this is a MOBA for PlayStation VR by Disruptive Games, and it got some pretty good reviews. Like I think this was at E3, and a lot of people played this in E3 and really liked it. David Jaffe, the God of War guy in Twisted Metal, wants to make a VR horror game. But David, don't you know that there's like literally millions of VR horror games? We need another VR... In fact, I was just going to say we need another VR horror game like we need another wave shooter. But honestly, there may be more VR horror games than there are wave shooters. There literally could be more. And Kevgret says Dreams and Beat Saber will both, both by late January book it. Dude, if Beat Saber... Okay, here's my prediction with Beat Saber. Today is October 12th. I have a prediction for Beat Saber, guys. Today is October 12th. Tomorrow, on Saturday, is October 13th. And what is October 13th? October 13th is this two-year anniversary of PlayStation VR. And I have a feeling on tomorrow, this is my Nostradamus Jr. prediction, I have a feeling, no Beat Saber by holidays, no, I have a feeling that tomorrow on the two-year anniversary of PlayStation VR, there's going to be a handful of minor PSVR announcements, one of which, one of which is going to be the release date for Beat Saber. And I think it's going to be a November release. I could look at the November calendar and try to give you an exact prediction. We know there's going to be a physical version of Beat Saber, and the physical version is going to have to come day and date with the PSN version as well. And the thing about a physical version is it does delay things a little bit, you know, because they got to they got to press the disc and do all of that. And so that's my prediction, though. Tomorrow, Sony will announce the official release date for Beat Saber PlayStation VR. There will be a couple of other minor announcements tomorrow. Maybe the release date for uh, Blood and Truth. We might get a release date for that. So I'm kind of thinking we'll get a couple of minor announcements tomorrow on the exact two-year anniversary, but maybe not. Maybe tomorrow will come and go and there won't be diddly. When it comes to all of these kinds of uh, emulator type things, typically what happens, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are, are kind of the same way, is typically what happens is you'll get it up and running. You'll put like Sonic the Hedgehog in there and you'll put Super Mario World in there and maybe uh, Super Metroid. You know, you'll throw in a couple of different games that are very familiar to you and, and you'll get these like nostalgic feelings for about 15, 25 minutes and then you'll never return to it again. I mean, am I right? Am I right, folks? Because that's kind of like new retro arcade neon 
really cool idea. Again, a lot of people that probably got new retro arcade neon, they're walking around this arcade, they got asteroids, defenders, all these different things. You play it for a while, it seems so incredibly cool, and then you never touch the damn thing again, which does seem to be the case. And see, part of the problem for me, I'm a legitimate retro gamer. Like, I was really into retro gaming before I got into VR. I got tired of modern gaming. I just got bored of modern gaming, quit modern gaming. I went retro, and then I discovered VR was coming, and I thought, well, maybe VR will get me back into modern gaming. And it did, at least for VR, as far as that's concerned. But one of my problems with all this retro stuff is I still feel like when you wear a headset, it doesn't feel super comfortable and you still get eye strain and all of that. So we're not yet at the point where you could put a headset on and you could play Super Mario World for two hours pretending that you're in a living room from 1992 or something like that, you know, and you have posters all over the wall and you have like a TV over there that's playing like family ties or some shit, you know, and you're in this 1992 world and it's really cool and you're playing Super Mario World and you got, you got your freaking uh, Capri Sun sitting on the table there and all of that. And, and your uh, your new Coke, you know, or Coke, whatever, the cherry Coke or clear Coke or whatever, you know, having all this stuff around you and playing an emulator, that would be fun. And, and could you do that for a couple hours? I can't do that because there's something about wearing a headset for too long. You're paying a price. Like I feel when you're wearing your VR headset, you're paying a price. And for me, the price is too expensive for retro gaming, it's too expensive. It's not too expensive for being in something incredibly powerful and immersive like Primordian or like Transference or like Win Winlands 2 or or any of these primetime VR games that we get into where you know it's got all these visuals and sound and Astrobot and all the sound effects and everything. I don't think the price is too high. Phil Yarn says Transference has the best VR graphics hands down for me. Well, you know what Transference does? I mean, I agree in certain ways, Phil Yearn. I love Transference. And I feel like Transference isn't, you know, going back to the word pub, Transference is not getting enough pub, not enough publicity. Like lots of people aren't talking about transference. Transference kind of came out and got swept under the rug, which is a true tragedy because that game is freaking powerful. And I think it's the whole horror thing and the fact that it's so short, it's 25 bucks. A lot of people decided to pass on it, but transference does have some damn good graphics in certain moments, especially when they're mixing like the real life human characters that they put into the world and they're kind of digitally created and they're like, you know, they're like moving around kind of weird style and it's kind of flickering and everything is going in and out. Transference did a great job. Really love that. But anyway, guys, I'm starting to get starving here. I'm going to check out. Hopefully my 1080 Ti will be here any minute now and I'll be able to pop that baby in and I'll be able to get some Cyber Morph going and I'll try some other stuff as well. That's going to be really fun. I am looking forward to that, to be sure. It's probably going to be really loud, though. I have a feeling that this 1080 Ti is going to increase the volume, and it's going to be kind of like a buzzsaw going off in here. But we'll have to see what happens, because it's just a regular Founders Edition. That CPU, though. Yeah, my 2500K is going to be holding shit back for a minute. I do need to do an, an entirely complete rebuild from scratch a new PC case, motherboard, CPU, brand new memory, an SSD. Yes, somebody at the very start when we were doing the countdown timer says, Anthony needs an SSD. Absolutely, I need to do all of that. And I plan on doing that in the not too distant future. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching today. We will be back. Tomorrow is 12 noon. Tomorrow is 12 noon. Check out the website if you get a chance. Be sure, be sure to subscribe to the show. Go ahead and like this video, like right now. Go ahead and like this video. Let's keep the like train going. And I will be back tomorrow at noon. I will see you guys then. Have a good one. We'll see you later.